you're looking live at an aerial view of the Paco Arena in Manila. And thank God it's Friday. And thank God that we are in for more volleyball action for you fans inside as we have another uh, quadruple header in front of us here at the Vili Collegiate League. And as we review our uh, matches for today, we will have our first game, the San Sebastian Recoleto Stags against the FEU Lady Tamaraus. And the next game would be the San Beda University Lady Red Spikers against the UST Golden Tigresses. Our third game would be the Ateneo Blue Eagles against the Adamson Lady Falcons. And closing our quadruple header for today is the UP Fighting Maroons against the College of St. Benilde Lady Blazers. We'd like to welcome all of you to our broadcast live inside the Paco Arena. Lawrence Fernandez here and with me this morning is Jamie LaVittoria. And Jamie, we are in for another treat, exciting volleyball action. And uh, our first match for today is uh, the San Sebastian Recoleta Stags against uh, the FEU Lady Tamarau. So San Sebastian, actually both teams haven't won a match in uh, this tournament. So um, they are both at 0-2, but uh, San Sebastian hasn't won a set in uh, six sets that is. And uh, it's fascinating to point out, Jamie, that during their last game, their last loss, they gave up 11 aces against uh, the team that uh, they uh, lost against. And as we check out uh, the team standings for now, uh, we have in Group A, we have uh, Ateneo and Adamson at uh, 2-0. and And Far Eastern University and San Sebastian both at 0-2. So this game, the first game, uh, a breakthrough for each of the teams. And Group B, we have College and St. Benilde and University of the Philippines both at 2-0 and, and University of Santo Tomas and San Beda University at 0-2. So going back to our discussion, Jamie, San Sebastian yet to win a set. Yes. Lost three sets to Adamson, lost three sets also to Ateneo. But in their last game against the Blue Eagles, they gave up 11 aces again, uh, in their last game. So what does that tell you? about uh, the, the problems uh, for San Sebastian from that uh, previous contest and how they can uh, adjust or how they can correct it? Well, in their past two games, they have become winless. So I hope that this week they were able to prepare what they need to work on, and that is their fighting spirit. I believe they are lacking in that hunger to win, and I hope that today they prevail and show us something today. Yeah, and also despite the fact that they are 0 and 2, there are some positives in their team. Talking about Christine Joy Junicio, who had 12 points against Ateneo, and also Catherine Santos, who had 11 points against Adamson. So, and also San Sebastian had 19 total errors in their game against Ateneo. Meanwhile, moving on to the other team, uh, representatives of the UAAP, the uh, FEU Lady Tamaraus, they are also 0 and 2, but. They've had difficult losses. They lost a five-setter to Adamson, and they lost a four-setter to Ateneo. And they had 35 total errors in their last game against the Blue Eagles. So they are there in the fight. It's just that they couldn't close it, Jamie. Unfortunately, they make unforced errors at the wrong time. And I feel like if they play their game, and I feel like if they have that mental toughness throughout the whole game I think they might prevail today though they are winless against uh, the opposition here in the V League there are some positives as well for FEU and that's a uh, Cheni Tagaod who had uh, 16 he was averaging 16 points per game and had 21 against uh, Ateneo and also Ann Monares had 20 against uh, Adamson so when we return it will be a live action inside the Paco Arena it's San Sebastian against FEU this is the V League
officials for this match. First referee, Mr. Jetronel Paredes. Second referee, Mr. Loomer Pajarillo. Let's call on our starting lineup from our NCAA team of San Sebastian College, Recoletos. Let's begin with our team captain, jersey number nine, Alexia Vea Season. At number one, Catherine Santos. Wearing jersey number four, Christine Marasigan. At number eight, Christine Joy Dionisio. Number 10, Camille Josephine Tan. And number 12, Jassy Lei Lumibao. Libero, number three, Jewel Bermilio. And head coach, or sitting in as head coach, Mr. Clint Malazzo. Calling on our Far Eastern University, Lady Tamaraos. Team captain wears jersey number five, Christine Ubaldo. At number seven, Anne Rossell Assis. Wearing jersey number nine, Shani Tagaod. At number nine, Floriz Papa. Number 19, Jean Assis. And number 20, Juliana Monares. Libero, number two, Sheila May Quiseo. Head coach, Miss Christina Salak. Check out our starting lineups for San Sebastian. We have Kat Santos, Tina Marasigan, KJ Junisio, Amakatan, Jassy Lumibao, Vea Season, and their starting libero is Jewel Bermilio. Meanwhile, on the part of FEU, we have Jill Gallo, Floris Papa, Chen Tagaod, Barbie Hamili, and Assis. Jean Assis, and their starting libero is Maxine Huanco. Our first referee for this match is Jetro Neil Paredes. Our second referee is Loomer Pajarillo. We are on our way in set number one with Ubaldo serving. Nice reception there. And an attack by San Sebastian, no go. Kiseyo sends it to the open. San Sebastian's opportunity to attack, but that was blocked. Wow, great start for FEU. Yeah, that defense is uh, established already early for the Lady Tamaraos. 1-0, first blood goes to the Lady Tamaraos. And Obaldo is still on the service line, their team captain. Sharp serve there. An attack by San Sebastian and finds that back line. Zone six, no one was there. <laughs> yeah, Junisha is one of the bright spots as we check out that replay. Just finding the gaps in the defense of uh, FEU. And one of the bright spots in San Sebastian is Junisha. Again, had 12 points against uh, Ateneo in uh, one of their uh, previous outings. So let's see if uh, she can put up enough points to lead San Sebastian to victory against FEU. Outside. Unfortunately, that attack is outside for Marasigan. And that error gives FEU their second point of the game. It's Anne Monare serving for the Lady Tamaraos. And that ball sails out. Two unforced errors. An exchange of errors. That's something that we don't want to see. Especially from teams that are yet to taste a victory here in the V-League. Limiting those errors will be vital for them to get that first win. Great receive. I think it's important that both teams have good service received today. Because when you have good service received, you're able to utilize everyone. You're able to run the quick, the UT, the open. Yeah, as I always say, it always starts with that reception and everything with follows. With a good pass. Yes, that's a good pass from Kiseyo. But that was received by the Lady Stags. Meanwhile, an attack by Sam Sebastian dropped ball, but that was received by Tagaod from the back row, Monares. That was received as well by San Sebastian. <laughs> And Marasigan finding almost the same gap that Janisha found earlier. Zone 6. Yeah, check out this replay. Just landing that ball in zone 6. 
FEU should do some adjustments with their floor defense to be able to address that gap because San Sebastian is having some success there. Meanwhile, Tagawad attacks, no go. Season sets it up. Same spot, zone six again. And again, that's the third time in this set that they were able to find that gap. And don't look now, those three attacks gave them that three point advantage early in set number one. They need to change their defense right now, their positioning. Yeah, that positioning should be changed before this lead gets any bigger for San Sebastian. Talking about FEU. Meanwhile, a nice dig there by Kiseyo and a nice reception as well. Papa sends it. And San Sebastian attacks. And that's a check ball in favor of San Sebastian. I could see the faces of the players of San Sebastian today. They're smiling. They have good energy. Even though it's a four-point lead, they're having that spirit that I was talking about earlier today. Yeah, perhaps it also helped that their <laughs> practice routine earlier, they were just chasing each other around. Yes, they were smiling and enjoying the game. Yeah, just uh, releasing the pressure of them because we know that it's a must-win for them to save uh, their campaign. But so far, they're doing good despite that point by the Lady Tamaraus. It's now three serving six. And on the service line for the Lady Tamaraus is an Asis. Season chases the second ball. An attack from the open off the block and good for Catherine Santos. San Sebastian is doing well with their receive. The sets are doing are on point, setting the person at the right time. Perhaps that's one of the adjustments they made considering the fact that they gave up 11 aces in uh, one of their games. And that over-reception, Santos wouldn't waste it. And that uh, over-reception, that point of that over-reception gives or sends us to our first technical timeout with San Sebastian ahead 8-3. to three. Coach Tina is back today para sa ating Lady Tamaraus. After coming from two losses, sabi ni Coach Tina, she's somewhat contented naman sa performance ng kanyang Lady Tamaraus after their game with Ateneo. Sabi ni Coach, most of the ladies were not feeling well these past few days. Actually, 10 of them and 3 of their coaches. Kaya sabi ni Coach, they have to prioritize their health, health more and take more vitamins and they need to recover. Sabi ni Coach Tina, she is still experimenting with her players and sabi niya, she's testing all of them pagdating sa training because she wants to maximize their capability. At ang advice ni Coach to her ladies ay the only permanent thing in this world is change. So they have to fight and adapt to anything that's coming their way. Lawrence and Jamie. Thank you for that insight, Sam Coloso. Yeah, Sam mentioned about their health. How big of a factor would that be, Jamie, as we see that attack first from FEU? How big of a factor that is coming into this game for the Lady Tamaraus? But before you say that, here's uh, a replay of the attack from uh, Papa that gives uh, FEU that fourth point. Yeah, going back to that discussion. It's difficult because it's the recovery after. Once you're better with the health, it, in training and during games, you get tired easily. Um, you don't have energy. So this could also be a factor. Yeah, that could be a factor why FEU is down six early in set number wow. one. But no energy. No energy gaps whatsoever for Tagawad. Check out the replay. Nice set from Ubaldo and Tagawad had just to put it away. Zone 6 for Chenny Tagawad, one of the leaders of the Lady Tamaraus. 
putting in the points for FEU in the previous two games. Meanwhile, a reception by San Sebastian in an attack, but that was dug by Tagawad, but Munares couldn't chase it. Offensively, San Sebastian is doing a great job. They're not only spiking with power, but also placement at the same time and being smart. I guess smart volleyball is what they are trying to establish early on because it's not about the strength and the power. Yes. They're just finding the gaps in the FEU defense. There we go. And that's something that FEU should establish if they are to overhaul this five-point deficit. Check it out one more time. That quick attack off the middle by Gene Assis gives like, FEU their six points. Yeah. I like how Ubaldo also set the middle. So first attack, good receive, easily can set the, the middle. Yeah, because they were not having success from the open spot earlier. And that's why they are now setting the middle. And that push by San Sebastian. Be quick. Yeah, be quick from Lumibao gives their 12 points. It's now 12 to 6. On the service line is team captain, Vea Season Setter. And from San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. Ubaldo to the open. Monares. Wow. Monares with a great cross cross bird shot. Ubaldo is doing a great job of allowing her spikers to shine. She's just not setting the open, but previously she was also setting the quick utility to switch it up a bit. And also at that moment, the blocking of San Sebastian was not established. The second blocker was Medjali. a bit late. Yes. That's why Monaris was able to find that open spot. Misconnect. Misconnect, oh. but the Lady Stags was still able to send it over. Tagao wow. this time. Back row attack from Tagao is good, and FEU is slowly catching up in this game. They are just down by four points. It's eight serving 12. At nasa service line natin si Tin Ubaldo, ang setter, and also team captain of the Lady Tamaraos. Season giving chase of the second ball. Monares was there for the dig. Great set. San Sebastian, can they respond? Same spot, zone six. That is the fourth time that this has happened. Yeah, they're having success. And that attack by Junisho, that's the second time that she was able to land that ball on that spot. And even though we are at the middle of these, uh, this uh, first set already, seems like FEU still not finding that adjustment in that zone six. I think it's important that FEU makes their adjustments now as opposed to in the latter part when they reach 20 points. What do you think? Yeah, that's right. That's a good observation. Meanwhile, also on the part of San Sebastian, they couldn't afford to give out errors, especially yes. now that they have a good advantage. Another unforced error. And that's two straight errors on the part of the Lady Stags. That's something that you don't want to see on their part especially now that they have this good advantage and they would like to maintain this advantage to be able to get their first victory. Meanwhile, Monar is on the service line, but that ball sails out. Unforced error after unforced error. They're just giving each other points. Maybe because they're playing in the morning, that's why they're not yet as sharp. As Maybe focused. they're a little sleepy, but we're yeah. filling some breakfast. Maybe the cobwebs are still there for <laughs> both teams. Let's see who heats up first. And again, another attack error on the part of FEU. That's why Coach Tina Salak is forced to call a timeout. We'll listen into their huddle. Diba? Mas aggressive tayong gumalaw kasi lamang sila. Kaya lang ang nangyayari, nagiging complacent kayo. Ah, iba, iba yun yung momentum, iba yun yung tempo. Tayo mag-dictate this time. Okay? Coach Tina Salak stated in the timeout that their training is different from how they are playing. She said that they have to dictate the game. They're ahead, so that is the more that they should be more aggressive and have more fighting spirit. Yeah, they, could, they couldn't wait for the Lady Stags to commit more errors. They have to chase those points yes. and be aggressive, especially on their attacks. You know, they just did the attack. Sometimes you get lucky in volleyball, Jamie. Yes. And that instance is the best example, talking about Papa. 
And that gives FEU 11, their 11 point. Yeah, go ahead. And that could also be the break of the game. This could b might be the shift of energy yeah, that FEU needs. That's a good observation. Meanwhile, San Sebastian on the attack. That was Doug. Ubaldo sets it. Back row attack to Monari. Soft tip. Will San Sebastian respond? But Ubaldo was there. Meanwhile, Asis to the open. Yes, the campfire. A gap on the defense. So check out that replay. Papa, a soft shot that is. Just finding that donut hole at the middle of the San Sebastian defense. Like I said, it's not all about power, but also placement. And that's two quick points for the Lady Tamaraus. There we go. Make it three of that kill block by FEU. Check it out one more time. That attack by Santos foiled by Tagaod and Papa. Don't look now. This is just a two-point deficit separating the two teams. FEU slowly catching up. Tagaod this time with an attack. Not over. Yeah, not over. And with that attack error, it sends us to our second technical timeout with San Sebastian up by 3, 16 to 13. We will be back for more. This is The Build. After the second technical timeout, San Sebastian Ladies tags up 3-16 to 13, but the FEU Lady Tamaraus were able to close that gap. First technical timeout ended 8 to 3, and now they're just down three points. What went right for FEU? That's why they were able to close that margin. Well, after the last timeout, they had some spark by number 10, Papa, which kind of shifted the game a bit and the energy as well. Now they're smiling and they just need to maintain that energy. Speaking of a spark, Tina Marasigan with a service <laughs> ace for San Sebastian. It's now 17 serving 13. Marasigan again. But that service fell short. Did not cross the net. So again, we are back to a three-point margin separating both teams. As we check out these substitutions, Gallo comes in for Papa. And Eliza De Vosora comes in for Tino Obaldo. I and think... This yeah. is a good time to um, utilize that double sub. And with this double sub, now they are able to have three spikers. Yeah, that's a full yes. front court for FEU. And also, going back to the fact again that they were coming off health issues. Yes. It helps to shuffle your lineup more often so exactly. that you always have fresh legs on the floor exactly. for FEU. Let's see if that adjustment by the Lady Tamaraus will do wonders. And that time, miscommunication on the part of Gallo and Asis. Asis thought that the ball would go to Tagaot. Yes, medyo mataas yung set ni Gallo. But that's okay. They'll recover from that. Uh, they're hoping that they can recover sooner than later because they are down four. four this is 18 serving 14. Gallo, back set, Tagaot. But that was uh, a good dig by the Lady Stags and another Great good dig, dig by Kiseyo. This time, De Vosora with an attack. Marasigan with the second ball. An opportunity for FEU. Gallo will reset. De Vosora, one more time. No. Jumps up the net. One by FEU. Right idea. Just the execution was a little off there. Yeah, Asis would like to drop it <laughs> inside in front of the, the net. <laughs> but... A bit strong on the push, and it's now 19 ser serving 14. Stags with a five point advantage. Tagaud one more time. 
Excellent floor defense so far for San Sebastian and a good defense also for Kiseyo. Season sends it to wow. Dionisio off the block and good for Christine Joy Dionisio. Let's check it out one more time. Just finding that gap in that block, Jamie. I have to say that San Sebastian has maintained that fighting spirit throughout the whole game and they've always been in the lead during this set. Yeah, because FEU was threatening. And speaking of threats, that's a threat for FEU because that's one too many service aces for F uh, San Sebastian. That's why Coach Tina Salak calls for time and will listen in. Kung namin nararamdaman sa katawan, i-over, i-overcome natin yan. This is the point na kailangan natin mag-turn of events sa tayo. Hindi na pwede nga hayaan natin na pumuntos ang pumuntos na ganun yung nangyayari. Nagpapabaya tayo, yun ang punto dyan. Wala tayong attempt. Ina-attempt natin, ano, tingin lang. Hindi naman tataas yung bola, kakatingin. Sabi ng pangalan, say mine. Kaya ba, magkaroon kayo ng accountability. Kung nasa online yan, puro mine, nagawa nyo na. Coach Tina Salak said they are lacking in accountability. The simple balls that should be dug up easily, are, they are not getting it. And I feel like this is the time, this is the crunch time for FEU that they have to step it up. They have to step it up because San Sebastian needing just four points to close set number one. That's why Coach Tina Salak trying to be witty in her huddle. Let's wow. see if that will have a good effect. But that's not a good result of a timeout by FEU because that's a textbook execution on the part of San Sebastian that a quick middle attack successful for the Lady Stags. And it's now 22 serving 14 with Santos on the service line. But that ball sails out. I think it's important that FEU doesn't count on the errors of San Sebastian, that they have to earn their points not based on the opponent's errors. Yeah, just like what Tina Salak said, their coach, you have to chase for those points. You don't have to wait for your opponent to make those errors because if they wait for seven errors to happen, that might not work. And uh, we check out uh, Barbie Hamili for the first time in this game, checking in for Chenny Tagaod, former Nazareth School of National University player. And that's a good serve for Hamili. And a good set also for season for San Sebastian. Gallo to the open. Monares. Season one more time to Dionisio. But that was Great well pick. dug by Kiseyo. Back set by Gallo. Not but ready for the cover. Yeah, not ready for the cover. And check it out one more time. That attack by Devosora was well read by Dionisio and Amakatan. Their middle blocker. And Amakatan is now on the service line. San Sebastian needing just two points to close this set. Gallo to Monares. Nice save there by Kiseyo. And FEU sends the ball over. Season going to the open one more wow. time. Tunisia having success. And that brings us to set point. Look at it one more time. Tunisia just targeting that zone in front of Kiseyo. That's why the libero of FEU was a split second late in receiving that ball. Set point for San Sebastian. Gallo to the middle. Monares dug by Marasigan. Junisio once more. Off the block and good for wow. Christine Joy <laughs> Junisio. And with that attack, San Sebastian closed this first set 25 to 15. We will be back with the second set. This is the V League where it all started.
a dominant first set win by the San Sebastian College Recoletos Lady Stags over the FEU Lady Tamaraus, 25 to 15. FEU was threatening in the middle part of that first set as we check out some of the highlights from the opening set, that attack by Santos, and also the set by Obaldo Tutagaod. But San Sebastian just pulled away towards the latter part of that set, going to a 9 to 2 run to close out that uh, opening frame 25 to 15. FEU had their spots, they had their opportunities, but San Sebastian's floor defense and also good ball distribution from their setter season worked wonders for the Lady Stags in set number one. And there you have on your screen from set one, we have a difference in attacks with 14 from San Sebastian, eight for FEU, two blocks from FEU, one block from San Sebastian, two aces from San Sebastian and zero from FEU. And you could see that FEU has eight errors and five from San Sebastian. Yeah, that's eight errors. That's roughly one third of the points yes. of San Sebastian. That's why they had an easy win in set number one. There we go. Meanwhile, FEU is responding early on in set number two with uh, Panangin. Mitsi Panangin coming in and successful with that quick attack. So first blood goes to the Lady Tamaraus in set number two with Ubaldo. Getting that ace, Tin Ubaldo, and asking for, uh, saying sorry rather to <laughs> that player. She did not mean to do target practice against that player, talking about Ubaldo. So it's now a quick 2-0 advantage for the Lady Tamaraus. But that attack by, unfortunately, despite the save by FEU, that net touch infraction gives a point to San Sebastian. Let's see if FEU will shift their energy for this set. They were kind of slow at the start, were able to kind of catch up, but let's see with the second set. So far, they're doing good. They have a slim one-point advantage. That's a great set by Obaldo, just a little too powerful from Monares. Too much power on that attack there by Ann Monares. Sends us to a tie, to a piece, early in set number two. On the service line for San Sebastian is Christine Joy Junisho. Doing wonders in set number one for the Lady Stags. Panangin this time off the middle. And that's two quick points for Panangin here in the second set. I think it's important that Ubaldo sets her middles. In the past two points, were from the middle attack. That is a, that's a good adjustment also on the part of FEU, allowing Panangin to check in. They got two points off her. Unfortunately, that attack by San Sebastian, though, is out. So it's now a two-point advantage for the Lady Tamaraus. Four serving two. On the service line is Ann Monares from Bacolod City. City of Smiles. City of Smiles. Let's see if FEU will be all smiles after this game. That would happen if they can get this victory. Meanwhile, Tagao pointing at the zone wherein the ball landed. Check it out one more time. That's set by Kiseyo. Tagaod, all she had to do was to spike it in that empty zone. It's now five serving two. FEU having success early in set number two, but their success for now will be ending with that service error. Unfortunately for Miss Serve, it kind of breaks the mom momentum of the game from a great spike to a service error. It kind of shifts the momentum there. Yeah, how, does, how does the momentum or how does the mentality of a team change after a service error? Um, it kind of changes it in a way that, you know, you work so hard prior for that point and then all of a sudden Biglan may miss serve. So it kind of dies down the shift a bit. Yeah, whatever momentum you have, you have to regain it or find it once more. But FEU still good. Wow. But that uh, middle attack by Tan gives San Sebastian their four point. As we see it one once again, Season sets it to the middle to Tan. And now it's uh, their four point. It's four serving six. And Marasigan on the service line for San Sebastian. Ubaldo jump set. There we go. Good combination play on the part of FEU with Hamili successful on that attack. The blockers of San Sebastian were kind of um, tricked 
by Ubaldo there. She, yeah. They thought that she was going to set the quick, but Biglan, last minute setting to the open. And also a nice effort by Jean Assis to fool the blocker yes. of San Sebastian. Season sends it to Santos. Kiseyo was there for the dig. Hamili with the second ball. An attack by Monares. Easily received by Marasigan. Dionisio this time. Dionisio off the block and good. But well, that's Santos rather. I have to give credit to Sison of San Sebastian. She's really doing her job of utilizing everyone, not just the open. And I have to say that the B quick has been effective throughout this whole game. Yeah, nice effort by Sison. And because San Sebastian is having a mini run, Coach Tina Salak is already up from her chair. And that's a result that FEU and Coach Tina Salak doesn't want because this is just a one-point advantage now, six serving seven. Coach Tina Salak still standing on the sidelines of FEU, whispering some instructions to her players. Six serving seven, Santos on the service line, over reception. But FEU will have an opportunity. Not Coach over. Tina Salak was asking for a check ball, but the ball wasn't over. And we are now tied. This advantage earlier by FEU was 5-2. to two. So it's now a 5-2 to two run. Great serve. By San Sebastian. Kiseyo sets it to Hamili. Block. But net that's touch. a net touch by Tan. And with that net touch by Amaka Tan sends us to our first technical timeout with FEU up 8-7. to seven. We will be back for more. This is The View. FEU enjoying a better result after that first technical timeout in set number two, eight to seven, as we turn the mic over to our courtside reporter, Sam Coloso, who has some updates for us. Thanks, Lauren. Sabi ni Coach Clint ng Lady Stags, it's a need for their team to play well today after coming from those two losses. Wala pa nga si Coach Roger dahil coding siya today but he's planning to catch up. There wasn't much room to practice because their last game was just a day ago and the Lady Stags are in the middle of their midterm week. That's why during practice, they just had a quick run-through on their defense. They don't want to load their girls further after that. Advice ni Coach to the ladies, I just balance everything, have time management and everything will fall in place. Lawrence and Jamie. Yeah, thank you for that insight, Sam Coloso. They're not overloading the girls, but it's very important to point out that they work on their defense and so far it's doing good for them, Jamie. Yes. I have to say that San Sebastian is doing a great job and they've adjusted from the previous games. They're working what they need to hone on, what they need to work on and it shows in their game today. So far, they're right there with FEU. But the Lady Tamaraos have a three-point advantage, 10 serving seven. On the service line is Jimmy Jean Barbie Hamili. Almost an ace for San Sebastian, but they will attack. And Kiseyo wouldn't be able to control that ball. San Sebastian gets their eight point in set number two. San Sebastian has improved on their service received from last game having 11 aces from Adamson, and I think that's what they worked on for one week, maybe in training. What do you think? Maybe that's <laughs> what they work on, the defensive pattern, yes. just like what Sam mentioned earlier. Meanwhile, no defense whatsoever on the part of San Sebastian there. Asis was able to get that quick attack off the middle and successful for FEU. On the service line is Jean Asis, also played for FEU Diliman. Girls Volleyball Tournament of UAAP. Meanwhile, season to the middle. Be quick again. 
And this Net time, catch. it's a point for FEU. That would have been a nice attack for the Lady Stags, though. Just that, that net touch infraction gives a point and gives side out to the Lady Tamaraus. Season. Marasigan will try. No. Ubaldo sends it to the open to Monares. Monares finding that zone one. Great reverse setting from Ubaldo. Normally, when that happens, it's possible to do reverse setting. And that's why San Sebastian sues for time, and we will listen in to Coach Clint. Nagumpisa ng error, tapos makakuha silang momentum. Isa lang yan kanina eh. 7-8 lang yan kanina eh. Nagumpisa ng misreceive, nagkakagulo kayo doon sa loob, wala ka sa pwesto. Pag panibagong set na to eh, tapos na yung first set, nanalo na tayo doon. Ito ang focus nyo. Hindi pa naman tayo tapos eh. Tayo pa lang eh. Coach Clint stated in the timeout they are lacking focus right now. He stated that they had won the first set and that's over and now it's time to reshift that energy and just focus on their game. Yes, they cannot rest on their laurels. Winning that first set, it's a totally different ball game when you come to set two. And that's what FEU understands. That's why they have a five point advantage so far. But San Sebastian would like to respond and that's a good outcome of a timeout for the Lady Stags. Junisho, that time, getting that attack point. So it's now 9 serving 13. San Sebastian trying to close this gap and eventually take the lead. Almost an ace there. An attack wow. by Hamili was not controlled by San Sebastian and that's successful for the Lady Tamaraus. Check it out one more time off the back row. That's a good attack for Hamili for FEU. Tin Obaldo this time serving for the Lady Tamaraus. Season sends it to Marasigan. Kiseye was there for the dig. Obaldo back set. Tagaod. Block. Kiseyo this time will send it to Monares. There we go. Placement again. That has been the second time that FEU was able to find that empty zone at the middle of the San Sebastian defense. They call it the campfire zone. The campfire or <laughs> the donut hole, so to speak. Whatever you call it, it's not a good spot for any team. And FEU wasn't able to chase that ball. That's why Coach Tina Salak is telling Ann Monares to be quicker. Sacrifice your ball. body on that. Die for it. Meanwhile, KJ Junisha on the serve for the Lady Stags. Yalang, bola lalabas. And that sends us to our second technical timeout. FEU with a six point advantage, 16 to 10. We will be back with more volleyball action. Check out the team standings in Group A of the V League Challenge Cup Women's Division team standings. Ateneo de Manila University and Adamson University both at 2-0. And, and the teams that are competing at that moment, at this moment rather, FEU and San Sebastian both at 0-2. We'll see which team will get their first victory in this tournament. Will it be the Lady Stags or the Lady Tamaraus? So far in set number two, FEU having a comfortable six-point advantage. Jamie, what has worked well for the Lady Tamaraus? That's why they enjoy this deficit. They're smiling in the second set. It looks like a different team from the first set. And you could tell that they have 
that hunger in their eyes. I think they needed that first set to warm up a bit, and now I think they're awake. They're awake. Seems like they used the first set to measure what San Sebastian yes. can offer. And right now, everything working well exactly. for the Lady Tamaraus. They are enjoying a seven-point advantage. Obaldo sets it to Banangin on the middle, but that was read by the Lady Stags. Santos, block. There we go. And that's the second time that Santos has been blocked on that spot. Check out that replay one more time. Tagao and Panangin just reading that attack by Santos very well. And we'll listen in to Coach Clint in this timeout. Open na lang eh. Eh, hindi natin nare-receive yung ball eh. Dalawa ng dalawa yung bumablock doon. Receive ba natin para may option tayo doon sa quick? Ha? Huh? Like, kahit naman sino eh. Babantayan ng babantayan na yun doon. Kung wala tayong quick. May backline naman tayo. Ba't di natin gamitin? Lumalayo no, na yan eh. Puro... Puro sila na lang. Tayo naman. Coach Clint stated in the timeout that they are lacking service receive and without service receive they are not able to utilize the quick and force the set open and he also stated that they have options like setting the back row as well. It's like an old sickness coming back for San Sebastian yes. because going back to our pre-game discussion they had they gave up 11 aces to Adamson and that's one too many. And it always starts with a pass. Yes. With one good pass, everything follows. Yes. But FEU getting that error, that's why San Sebastian gets a point. 11 serving 18. Ubaldo sets it to Hamili. There we go. Off the block for Hamili. Check out that replay one more time. Hamili just working that ball through the blockers of San Sebastian. So aside from the floor defense of San Sebastian not working well, they have to do better if their net, net defense as well. Yes. And that attack by Junisio not over. And again, that net defense by FEU waiting there, even though it would have sailed over the yes. ball. FEU Tagaot and Panangin was exactly. still there. Yes. Season one more time in the middle. And again, Jamie, that net defense working wonders for FEU. This is the first time that the B quick did not work today. They're able to adjust right away FEU. And that's what I love that they're doing right now. Yeah, it seems like the Lady Tamaraos have already telegraphed what Season is trying to do. And there it is one more time. Although Marasigan forced that ball through Asis and Hamili. That's why they were able to get the side out and the point. 12 serving 21. This is a sizable 9-point advantage for FEU. Let's see if San Sebastian can respond. And that's a combination play. Good. Although, ball is out. That was a great combination play by Ubaldo. Be quick for the quicker. And thus for Hamili. Very nice. Unfortunately, tough luck for FEU because the ball sailed out. Nice great execution. Idea. Yes, great idea, but the result wasn't there. Meanwhile, good result on the part of Tagaot, just pushing the ball and using the defense of San Sebastian to their advantage, FEU. So it's now 22 serving 13. Cheni Tagaot on the service line. Cheni Tagaot from Tagum Davao and also went to University of San Jose Recoletos before going to FEU. Jump serve, great serve for Tagaod. Season to the open. Joust at the net, won by Ubaldo. All around, FEU is doing a great job in attacking, receiving, and blocking by the net. And it seems like it's the same story but different chapter we're seeing in set number two because yes. San Sebastian was able to dominate the first set. And here we are, FEU needing just two points to close out set number two. Also having a 10-point advantage. A reversal of fortunes for both teams. But Tan having success with that campfire defense of FEU. Tagaod and Kiseyo trying to give chase. Ayun nga, nabatukan pa ni Kiseyo itong si Tagaod. In that situation, you'd rather have two people bumping into each other than no one getting the ball. Yeah, it shows their 
aggressiveness, their yes. willingness to get the ball. Meanwhile, that attack by Asis sends us to set point. FEU has 10 set points to work with. This is a good advantage for FEU. But in volleyball, stranger things have happened. So still, the Lady Tamaraos couldn't afford a couple of errors because it could give momentum back to San Sebastian. Ubaldo sets it to Munares. Will this be it? No, block. Ubaldo one more time to Dagao this time. Received by Marasigan. Season to Santos. Back row attack. No. Ubaldo one two play. Received by go. Tan. But Tan was a step too late. And that one two play by Ubaldo closes set number two with FEU with a big margin 25 to 14. Same result but different winner. Check out Ann Monares in our screen and also Tim Ubaldo. Uh, focus, picture of concentration for FEU. Also a glimpse of uh, Jimmy Hamili. And we will be back with more action. We are now one set apiece. This is the B League where it all started. After set number two, it's a reversal of fortunes. This time, FDU having a dominant 25 to 14 victory, tying the set count to one set apiece. We'll see with these highlights how FEU dominated that set. Jamie, what worked well for the Lady Tamaraus? That's why they were able to close it out easily. Their offense played a big role during this game, and their service received was on point. And because of that, they were able to utilize the quick, the open, and the utility, unlike San Sebastian, who didn't have received. So they were forced to give the open every single time. As we check out the sets, two stats. And there you have on your screen, attacks with 14 from FEU, San Sebastian eight. Three blocks from FEU, San Sebastian with zero. One ace from FEU, zero from San Sebastian, and six errors from FU and 7 from San Sebastian. That's a sizable 14 to 8 advantage in attacks and 3-0 in blocks talking about FU. Aside from the net defense of FU working, how did the substitutions for Hamili and Panangin work for the Lady Tamaraus? Hamili has stepped up big time and I believe she's a silent killer. She works well in the front row and back row with that back row attack and she has great defense as well. We welcome you to set three, and getting that first point is San Sebastian off that joust, won by Junisho. Lady Stags drawing first blood in set number three. This time, at least in that sequence, the Lady Stags look aggressive at this point. Monares this time on the there attack. We go. Obaldo sets it. Miscommunication on the part of Not the Lady Tamaraus. Marasigan this time. 
Camille not ready for that back row attack. <laughs> I guess that's a mi miscommunication on the yes. part of FEU as well. So some confusion on the yes. part of the Lady Tamarows. So how do you adjust quickly when things like those happen? Well, it's important for the setter to tell their spikers, be ready always. Um, it, there are situations in the game where, of course, you don't know who the setter is going to give the ball to. So it's really important to be ready and stay ready. Especially now, they have to stay ready and be ready because the momentum is on FEU's side yes. because they won set two and they have a slight two to one advantage here in set number three. And again, that net defense is there, Jamie. San Sebastian has been very predictable so far in this set and also the last set. And it's really key that impo the importance of service receive. Seems like they have forgotten their middle attack talk talking about the ladies' tags. Let's see if they will go there. That's a middle attack, but foiled once again by FEU. Santos this time in an attack, but Monares was there. And Ubaldo will send the ball oh. over. And confusion on the part of the Lady Stags allowed Ubaldo to score on that easy over. Check it out one more time. Ubaldo just flipping it up. And nobody from San Sebastian getting that ball. Lack of communication there. If From that sequence, who, who should get that ball? The libero. It also just depends on their system. Normally it could be the libero or it could also be the middle blocker who is also right there. It just depends on what they practice in, in training. And Dodo Cloud, this is now a 5-1 to one advantage by FEU. That's why the Stags will call for time. Let's listen in to Coach Clint. May utayo ka doon. So ganun, Jewel, i-exert, i-ano mo na yung ano mo. Nakatayo na lang eh. Agawin mo na. Keso, itulak mo pa siya dyan eh. Makuha mo lang yung bola eh. Inumpisahan natin ng ganyan. Sasahabulin naman natin. Ano ang problema nyo? Kat, doon mo sa ibabaw paluin. Ha? Coach Clint told her his libero, Jewel Bermilio, to get the ball. It's important that the libero takes charge in getting that free ball so the offense is run smoothly. Whatever momentum San Sebastian had with the first set with their floor defense and their reception is already gone because since, uh, FEU won that second set yes. easily and now they are threatening to pull away early in set number three another attack error by San Sebastian gives FEU their six point and substitution on the part of San Sebastian coming in is uh, Ramos yes Julian Ramos and checking out is Santos Let's check out if that adjustment will do wonders for San Sebastian. And so far, Marasigan is trying to keep her team close to FEU. Marasigan has done a great job, actually, throughout the entire game. She looks like a leader on the court to me and does well offensively. Yeah, you mentioned early in the game, they have to have that fight. Talking about San Sebastian. Unfortunately, that attack, though, by FEU is out. Another four point for San Sebastian. That's two quick points for the Lady Stags. So you mentioned earlier the fight for San the Sebastian. Hunger. The hunger. Seems like Marasigan is leading the way. Yes. Still is not enough. They have to find other options. And that's a good response on the part of the Lady Stags of a timeout that blocked by the Lady Stags. Both them closer to within two. Earlier, this is, was a five to one advantage. And now it's four serving six with Lumibao serving. Ubaldo to Tagaod. There we go. I've noticed with Tagaod, she plays well when the sets are a little bit faster because her approach is so explosive that the set can be even a shoot set and her set to the utility can be a little bit lower. That's why Ubaldo has been giving her those quick balls to some success for Cheni Tagaod. Ubaldo one more time. This time to Hamili. <laughs> Having success on both sides of the open. Talking about FEU. This time Hamili. 
And that sends us to our first technical timeout with FEU up 8-4. to four. And let's hear some insights from our courtside reporter, Sam Coloso. Thanks, Lawrence. Earlier in Coach Clint's huddle with the Lady Stags, he wanted Kath Santos to step up for this set. Sabi ni Coach, give a little more patience and effort on the ball and don't be confused pag napunta sa'yo. Dito sa set number three, back to zero tayo. We have to start over and build back our momentum. We need to be consistent, lessen our errors, and double up on our reception. Lawrence and Jamie? Thank you very much, Sam, for that update. And as Sam was updating us on what Coach Clint Malazo told her ladies, Panangin gets a service ace and Panangin gets a service error. So Panangin gave a point to FEU and also gave a point to San Sebastian. I always see that trend where it's an ace. You get all hyped up and you rejoice and Big Laan may serve after. That always happens. That could be the adrenaline working, uh, Jamie. <laughs> Couldn't control that momentum, that force. That's why errors eventually comes in or even errors eventually happen for the server meanwhile another uh, error on the part of san sebastian an exchange of errors that is at the middle part of set number three with tagaod serving for the lady tamaraus and that was well received an attack from the middle block by hamili this time to the open they go feu Will attack, Ubaldo's attack, no go. San Sebastian once more, but Monares was there. Asis to Hamili. Season will set it up. Miscommunication there. Yeah, Marasigan did her best to chase that ball. But Season was blocking her way. I think Season was trying to go for the running attack, but I think her spiker went in for a back quick. In those instances, the spiker can just push the setter yes. away. Yes. Yeah. I mean, no harm done. This time, an attack by Ass is successful. And again, FEU is pulling away. The, the composure, the, it seems like uh, San Sebastian is already feeling the pressure. Defeated. They look yes. defeated already. How do you bounce back? Or as a coach, how do you bounce back from a big deficit like this? Well, this is where the killer instinct comes from and that mental toughness, especially during times like this. You know, these are the moments that you train and why you train hard every day for games like this to really step up and to really hone your skills. San Sebastian getting that point, that could be the turning point. If they can string some points together, wow. unfortunately, FEU remains strong with that attack by Monares. FEU just picking up the spots here in set number three as we check out that attack by Monares. Again, it's not a strong attack. Yes, she just placement. Pushed, oh, just placement attack, that is. FEU is working or playing intelligent volleyball so far. And another attack error by San Sebastian gives another point to the Lady Tamaraus. San Sebastian really has to shift their energy. They kind of look like how FU was looking in the first set. Um, not that, you know, having so much fun, not smiling on their faces. Yeah, they should find that momentum or whatever helped them win that opening set to be able to overcome this sizable advantage by the Lady Tamaraus. Asis apologizes to her coach, Coach Tina Salak, after that error, but they're still in good hands. 
up 7, 7 serving 14 with Tan on the service line for the Lady Stags. Meanwhile, Monaros with an attack. Okay, this is now not the time to make unforced errors. San Sebastian might lead. Yeah, because even though they're up big, a string of errors can turn the yes. tide, especially for San Sebastian. But that's something that you don't want to see. You could see Coach Clint shaking his head right now, not smiling. Yeah, because he has been doing all the adjustment. He has already said everything, yes. and yet the result isn't working on the part of San Sebastian. Yes. But I would like to ask you, after a service error, and you've been a player before, how do you bounce back from that type of error? How do you refocus or reset your mindset? I make Bowie from moving on right away and just looking at the next point. It's, it's not good to dwell on the mistake because volleyball is so quick. Meanwhile, a quick attack by Panangin sends us to our second technical timeout, 16-8 to FEU with a big advantage. We go back to our second technical timeout of set number three. FEU enjoying a big eight-point advantage. And I have to ask you, Jamie, because San Sebastian had a good run in the first set. They were able to win it by 10 points. And now, it seems like they couldn't find the rhythm. How has the tide turned quickly against them? It looks like San Sebastian has been having a lack of focus. A lot of balls are dropped in between. There you have on your screen a service ace by Isis. So I feel like this is the time where they need to pin down and step up because this, the score is 8-17 right now. And also their uh, body language looking at them right now. They look defeated. They look yes. tired. They need a spark. And again, another infraction on the part of San Sebastian, double contact. Those are the results that you don't want off a timeout especially for Coach Clint, because FEU is just pulling away. This is now a 10-point advantage. Asis is still serving. An out-of-system play for uh, San Sebastian. And you saw that play coming because Season had to give chase. Yes. Unfortunately, the weakness of San Sebastian has been their service received. And because of that, they are forced to set the open, which is becoming predictable. Yeah, because of that predictability, but... We check out that service error first by Jean Assis. That predictability for San Sebastian seems like they've also forgotten their middle attack. They were having yes. success with that quick attacks of the middle, especially in set number one. And actually in set number two, every time the setter, Season would set B, be quick, it was never successful anymore because FEU was quick to make that adjustment. And that's a sign of a good team those who are making the right adjustments at the right time. Meanwhile, this replay, a quick attack, a running attack, that is by Mitzi Panangin of that set by Obaldo, brings FEU to 20 points. Meanwhile, San Sebastian still in single digits with nine. This is a big 11-point advantage for the Lady Tamaraus. One hand set There you go. by Obaldo, still good for Monares. Great set by Obaldo. Great adjustment. Check it out one more time. She was too close to the net, so she couldn't do anything about it. But Pop it up. Pop it up. Just put it up. And Monares did the rest. Just finding that gap once more. 21 serving 9. FEU needing just 4 points to close set number 3. San Sebastian has continuously been giving unforced errors. And that's what's crushing them this set. They look like in this array, talking about San Sebastian. Yes. 
maybe the pressure of losing set number two gotten the worst of them here yes. in set number three. And they use all their energy for set one. There we go. That's a good response on the part of Janisho, but they would need more than that to overhaul this advantage by FEU. This is a 12-point lead by the Lady Tamaraus, though Janisho is on the service line. It's a big mountain to climb for the Lady Stags. Let's see if they can overhaul it. Ubaldo chases the ball to Hamili, but Janisho was there waiting. Season this time to Marasigan, but Hamili was there again for the dig. Monares, soft push. There we go. And again, smart volleyball on the part yes. of Monares. I have to give credit to Hamili for that great dig. And the campfire zone is, has been affected today for FEU. Yeah, the if donut. In the, if in the first set, FEU had that empty gap or open gap in zone six, let's ask San Sebastian is having problems with that campfire. Meanwhile, another miscommunication on the part of San Sebastian. That's the right idea of Sison to set the middle. It's just the set was a little bit too high for her to reach. The energy is like sapped yes. from San Sebastian right now. Seems like they're just waiting for this set exactly. to end because we are now at set point. But San Sebastian still has an opportunity to string some points. But Tagao ends that set that quickly. FEU takes set number three in dominating fashion, 25 to 10. And that's two sets that have been dominant on the part of FEU after losing that first set, giving it to San Sebastian. And we will take a quick break. We'll be back for more inside the Paco Arena. This is The View. The spikers have been doing well. If FEU won the second set in dominating fashion, they took the third, third set, annihilating San Sebastian Lady Stags. We check out the highlights from set number three with Marasigan, one of the few instances of success for the Lady Stags. But FEU just uh, too dominant it's with surgical precision, that is defeating San Sebastian in that third set just allowing 10 points for the Lady Stags Tin Obaldo with that adjustment and Monares just finding the open zones in the defense of 
the Lady Sags as we check out the numbers. And there you have on your screen, we have 10 attacks from FEU, three from San Sebastian. And that's a big advantage that is, talking about F FEU. We also checked out the errors, nine errors on the part of San Sebastian. And that's something that you don't want to see on the part of FEU because they already have the momentum and they don't want a succession of errors to give San Sebastian a chance in set four. It's really important that San Sebastian shifts their energy. They smile more, they look defeated last set, and it's really important that they gain momentum because these both teams have been winless. So it's important that they step it up today. But they should also remind themselves that this is a different set already. This is set four. They, st they still have an opportunity if they win this. Talking about San Sebastian, they could force a fifth set. So all they need is to refocus and find that composure. Meanwhile, that uh, attack by FEU was good, giving them their second point. We actually see a change in the lineup here with FEU, a change setter. Gallo they put in and Ubaldo we have here resting. Let's yeah. see if um, Gallo is still able to do what Ubaldo did last set. Yes, it's a matter of continuity. We'll there see we if go. Gallo will be able to do that. So far, that's a successful response on the part of FEU after that attack by Marasigan on the part of San Sebastian. The difference between FEU and San Sebastian is that FEU has service received. They're able to utilize their offense, set the quick, set the open, set the UT. And that's another sequence where in season had to chase the ball of that reception. Meanwhile, Santos was blocked. Check it out one more time. Season sends it to Santos, but Tagaod was there waiting, also panangin for the wall of FEU. San Sebastian hasn't solved that net defense of FEU. And another out of system play for them. Easy over for the Lady Stags. You see the setter running everywhere. And, wow, that's, a, and that's not play. a good sign if the setter is running everywhere. Season has been running back and forth because of the service received. And that's why FEU is taking that advantage of that combination play. Tagao doing wonders with that attack. It's now four serving two. Munares at the service line. Season this time. But that set was wow. not optimal. And it was too easy. Exactly. And what I love about FEU was that they made quick adjustments. Tagaot first set was open. They put in Hamili and then now they're utilizing her as utility, which is allowing FEU to thrive because of the blocking of Tagaot. And that adjustment, has check out another miscommunication on the yes. part of San Sebastian. San Sebastian, the Lady Stags, haven't solved that adjustment that shift we're in Tagao yes. is now at middle blocker from the open and they're still finding the right code the right combination for them here in set number four Santos this time Gallo sends it to Hamili season great set great set but the block was still there Santos will send it over Free easily ball. Panang in wow. this time. Quick attack once again. Yeah, just a quick push for FEU because they're having success with their both aspects of yes. their defense, not just net defense, but also floor defense. And what I like is that they're smiling. They're enjoying the game, unlike where you have San Sebastian. They kind of look defeated already, and we just started the full set. And that's an infraction on the part of San Sebastian, not a result that they wanted. That's why we are quickly into our first technical timeout in set four. FEU up 8-2. We will be back with more volleyball action.
Let's send it over to our courtside reporter, Sam Coloso, with more updates. Thanks, Lawrence. During the huddle of the ladies' tags, Coach reminded the girls to play with gratefulness. Coach Clint isn't putting any pressure on these girls, but they want to maximize what they can do for this game. For this set, sabi ni Coach, go back to your core, go back to basics, and protect your areas. Don't give the opponent an easy ball. Lawrence and Jamie. Thank you very much, Sam, for that insight. Keywords, back to basics, Jamie. Yes. It's really important to have those rudimentary skills in volleyball, and not just in volleyball, but any sport, to have basics. And without basics, you're not allowed to elevate your training, elevate your drills as well. Meanwhile, a timeout on the part of the Stags of the technical timeout. Let's listen in to Coach Clint. Black. Wala tayong kumong coverage. Ano ginagawa mo, Jassy? Hindi na, hindi naman sinet sa yung bola. Alam, obvious na obvious, 4 yun eh. ginagawa mo doon? Ikaw yung pinakamalapit na dapat ka mover doon. Tumulong. Hindi ka na nakatulong sa opensa. Hindi ka pa tumutulong sa coverage. Ano pa gagawin natin dyan? Display lang. Tumulong tayo. Hindi tayo nakakatulong eh. Alam nyo naman si Tina, puro cross court. E di abangan nyo yung, yung gitna ng blocker. Yun na ma makakablock sa kanya eh. Dahil nga puro cross court ang palo. Hindi, abangan nyo kung saan napupunta yung bola. To summarize what Coach Clint had said, he basically said to do your job. It's really important that the San Sebastian, you know, boost their morale. As to say that, you know, they look defeated. They look, you know, they're not smiling anymore on their faces. Coming off that timeout earlier by Coach Clint, off that technical timeout, Sam mentioned, Coach Clint is not putting any pressure on the part of the Lady Stags, but it seems like the Lady Stags themselves putting pressure on themselves. Yes. That's yes. why they look heavy, their system. They, they're not the same team that is. And that's why FEU able to pick their spots, able exactly. to just find the gaps in their defense. And unfortunately, with San Sebastian, their weakness has probably been mental toughness, you know. They're kulang in that killer instinct, and that all comes with experience. So Very young team. So hopefully, this relatively young squad, you think that with more games, with more experience, they will be able to build that killer instinct, that tenacity. Yes, exactly. With leagues like this, it's really great for these players to um, have more practice and with this, they'll gain more experience. Even with the losses, like I told you earlier, it's not a loss if you don't learn. And it's really important that these girls take in all these experiences, all these losses and wins, and take it to heart and learn from it. Yeah, that's a good result on the part of San Sebastian that time. That attack error by Hamili gives them their four point. But FEU is at 10. That's a six point advantage. Season doing what she can, but to no avail. Meanwhile, that attack by Tagaod sails out. Lucky break on the part of San Sebastian there. Too strong from Tagaod. But I love how she was able to utilize that running attack. You know, change the pace of the game and change her attacks. Yeah, Tagaod, when she attacks, there's no fear. She just does her thing. There we go. To check it out once, once more. Once she gets a good ball, she will just attack it. Check it out one more time. And I love how Gallo set her after that air because that allows your spiker to gain more confidence. And, you know, after making that air, you want to spike the ball hard again after. Yeah, regain the confidence yes. on the part of Tagaod. Successful for FEU. Monaris with an easy reception. Season, back row. No. Gallo this time to Tagaod once more. Soft there. tip. There we go again. And again, FEU having success with that campfire. San Sebastian has had that issue all throughout that game. Not being able to play the defense in the middle. They look at each other, no, no communication whatsoever. Yeah, they look a step slow in getting those kind of balls. Because they could have easily telegraphed where the ball would land, exactly. but no one would respond. And that's not a good sign if they would like to force a fifth set in this game because they're already down seven and they haven't made the necessary adjustments. 
Meanwhile, Season will set it to the middle. But they're having problems with that yes. set from Free the middle. Ball. Hamili once more. Wow. I love watching the approach of Hamili. Really explosive. Check it out there one more go. time. Nice set by Gallo. And also a nice fake on the part of the Tamarau's middle blocker. That's Karim Trues. I have to give credit to True. She is blocking every single thing and doing a great job. With being a force at the net, that is Karim Trues. Just check in here in set number four for FEU. And here she is again. Quick on her reflexes. At that time, Santos successful against Trues and Gallo. One of the rare instances of an attack point for San Sebastian. Unfortunately, the B quick attack of San Sebastian has not been working. The only time that it worked is actually in set one. They tried utilizing it in set two, but they've just been blocked every single time. Could, be, could it be a problem of the low sets that comes from CSUN? There's some sets that are low, but then the defense of FU, the blocking, has been perfect. Meanwhile, Tagad with an attack dug by Marasigan. Junisha this time dug by Monares. Gallo sends it to Hamili. And Hamili finding that same yes. spot again. Coming from the bench from set two, Hamili has done a great job. You know, it's it's difficult coming from the bench. You're cold, you know, you're still in your jacket. Sometimes you don't know when you're gonna be called to be in. And I love that she's been able to do her job. But in a team aspect, it's very important to also have players coming off the bench yes. contributing instantly for your team. Exactly. There are some players that work well off the bench, to be honest, or as a starter. It if just it, depends, actually. If you, had it, if you had it your way during your playing days, would you rather come off the bench or would you rather start? Start, for sure. Okay. As we check out Jean Hamili, or Barbie Hamili, that is, from the service line. Monares was there for the dig. Meanwhile, Hamili this time dug by Santos. San Sebastian sends the ball over. Gallo to Monares. Santos was there. An attack by Junisho. Junisho um. finding that sideline. Check it out once more. Season sends it to Junisho. And there's no one in that zone five. I'm loving Janisha though. No fear. You can see the look on her face. She has that hunger. I just hope that her teammates, you know, get that as well. Yeah, but the problem, I guess, with San Sebastian is just one person taking over every set. And that never works. And that never works. That's right. And that's why FEU going into the second technical timeout has a big nine point advantage 16 to 9. And we will be back with more volleyball action. This is the view. Yeah, her name is. After that second technical timeout in set number four, FEU just maintaining the momentum from set number two, essentially. They have been this good against San Sebastian, and yes. they haven't let up in, at any point from set two up until now. As we check out first that substitution on the part of FEU, Incarnacion now serving for the Lady Tamaraus. Great serve. A good serve. Season to the middle. Still no success for San Sebastian. Tagal this time. No fear from that back row attack. Yeah, whenever she gets that ball, she has no he hesitation to spike it, whether it's a low set or whatnot. And she adjusts. Like what you just said, 
high or low set. She just puts it over. She's a smart player, and I love watching her composure on the court. And her composure on the court also rubs off from her yes, to her it's teammates. Contagious. Yes. Season with a set. But Monares was there, or Encarnacion rather. Almost there. Yeah, but was not enough that sequence for Encarnacion. And a rare point on the part of San Sebastian, 8 serving 17. I have to give credit to Season their setter. She's running everywhere. You know, it's it could be very tight throughout the game to run back and forth, but that's your job. As a setter, you cannot complain. But uh, on a coaching standpoint, it's something you don't want to see your setter running all over the court. Of course. Because that's a signifier of misreceptions or any blunders with uh, their first ball, that is. Yes. Manares, just too short. Right idea, though. That's two quick points on the part of the Lady Stags. Nine serving 17. But it's, this is a still a big eight-point advantage. And they would need more of those. Talking about San Sebastian to overhaul this big deficit. They still have seven points to work with if they want to force a fifth set. Meanwhile, FEU wanting to close this game in four. Season Heavy one serve. more try. Gallo to Monares. Wow. Effective talaga yung quick set, shoot set for the FEU Tamaraos. They're, all of their spikers, their approach is explosive. That's why it's okay to do quick sets, forcing the offense to be faster. Yeah, despite the change in setter, FEU still finding success with Gallo rubbing off from the success of Tin Obaldo earlier. She's still, still doing wonders for FEU. Meanwhile, another point on the part of the Lady Stags. 11 serving 18. And on the service line is Christine Junisho, who has been trying to carry her squad here in set number four. But one good player isn't enough to be able to overhaul a huge deficit. They would need more points from their other players. Great set. Marasigan this time. But Mona Incarnation was there waiting. Double contact. A rare instance of a setting error on the part of FEU. Yes. With San Sebastian, it's really important that they are just not a one-man team. You can tell that the utility is doing a great job, but we need to utilize the middle, and that is what we need from that service receive. Yeah, they would need more players to step up because FEU is already threatening to pull away. 19 serving 12. Unforced error by San Sebastian. Especially at this stage of the set, that's Crunch something time. you don't want to see. Monares with a good serve. Season sends it to Santos. The block was there. Back row attack. Saved by Encarnacion. And the rally continues. Season back set. Marasigan. The block was there again. Season a bump set to the other side. Santos. Oh. With the help of the net right there. Yeah, sometimes the net can be an enemy or a friend. <laughs> and that time, Santos had a favorable bounce off the net that time. But then again, despite that favorable bounce, FEU's net defense yes. was still there. Wh why was it hard for San Sebastian at this game to break that wall defense by FEU? I don't think they're ready to cover. You know, FEU was able to make adjustments throughout the game. But San Sebastian has not made their own adjustments to the game. And that's what's killing them right now. They're not able to cover. They're not communicating. And they also don't have receive. Speaking of adjustments, some adjustments on the part of FEU. True is coming in for Incarnation. But San Sebastian calls for time. Let's listen in to their huddle. Nagulat ka eh. Ano eh, tied? Eh, last, last, ano na to, ah, last stretch na to. Ilaban nyo na lang kung hanggang sa tayo umabot. Ayan. Pag maganda yung receive, tumuloy ka ng pato. Hindi, bukas. <laughs> Ngayon na, syempre. <laughs> Kat, paluin mo lang ng paluin. Palu May co-coverage sa'yo, ha? Sige, tuloy-tuloy lang. Huwag kang ihinto, huwag kang matatakot, ha? Sige. Coach Clint stated in the timeout that 
this is crunch time. This is the time to push, to fight, and this is the time to do it. What do you think, Lawrence? I feel like this is really important for San Sebastian to step it up right now. Coach Glenn trying to lighten up the mood on the huddle of San Sebastian because they have been feeling the pressure ever since set, set number two. They haven't, find their, haven't found their rhythm. They haven't found their game. There we that go. Time, that's a good response of a timeout by Tan of that running attack. Check it out one more time. A good execution. And Monares was a step late in saving that ball. But then again, they would need more of those. A string Mga of six points. Pa. Six <laughs> points at least. Or 11 if they would like to win it. Marasigan sends the ball over easily. Opportunity for FEU to attack. Cruz finally scores. Like Coach Clint said, you know, last stretch of the game, this is where you have to push and push and push and try and not give so much unforced errors because you're giving your opponent points. That's not, that's not the push that they needed, a push off the net <laughs> for San Sebastian. Meanwhile, Tagaod with a jump serve, a good serve that is. Jumps at the net. Taken by FEU. Hamili once more off the block Hamili, and good. Hamili, yet again. She has been a force to be reckoned with this entire game. She came off the bench, second set, and she's really been doing her job, just not offensively, but with receive and defense. Yeah, ever since she was put in, also Panangin in set yes. number two, everything worked well on the part of FEU, and they need just three set points, or three points rather, to close this match. Marasigan, a rare instance of yes. a successful attack off the back row for San Sebastian. Off speed. We see San Sebastian smiling though after that last time out and maybe this could be it. It's not over until it's over. Yeah, maybe lightening up the mood from Coach Clint will be able to do Great wonders serve. for them and that's two quick points for the Lady Stags. And that's why we will have a timeout on the part of FEU. We will listen into the huddle of Coach Tina Sala. Pasaan natin ng magandang pasa para makapagawa tayo. Uh, prior, sino ang ano mo? Tatas fighters natin. Dalawa play na, ko. Dalawa. Dalawa. Dalawa play natin. AI coach. Pwede naman try yung si Barbie AI. Kaya, kaya running? Nakakatakbo? O ano? Hindi kaya? Sige, AI tayo. Dalawa, mal, mal, uh, may dalawa kang bakro. Huwag mo na ibabalik sa likod yung ano. Huwag mo na ibabalik sa likod yung buwan. Ready, ready tayo ha? Tulong tayo. Support tayo kay Gary. Support tayo kay Gary. Bye! Coach Tina said that we need a pass. And with a pass, the setter is able to run anything she wants. She has great spikers on the court. She can utilize the open, the quick. And she kind of stated about a running attack earlier. Especially now they cannot rest yet because San Sebastian is trying to pull closer with a string of quick points. Wow. And that's a good response on the part of Hamili off that timeout by FEU. Hamili has just been great overall around. Like, with her serves, her spikes, and her defense. Yeah, she has been that spark plug on the part of FEU ever since she entered the game during the second set. Everything changed on the part of the Lady Tamaraus. Meanwhile, a quick attack by Tan, no go. Gallo sends it to the Hamili on the back row. With the help of the net. Again, the net being a friend of Hamili that time. <laughs> and she's just having success, whether it's from the open spot or the back row. She's just finding success. And that attack by Hamili sends us to match point with Hamili also serving for the Tamaraus. Unforced error. And that uh, Yay. attack error by San Sebastian sends us to the end of this game. FEU winning in four sets, 25 to 16. Winless no more. Winless no more. <laughs> You're right, Jamie. On the part of Far Eastern University, unfortunately for San Sebastian, they fall to 0-3 and three in pool play. Everything just changed from the second set yes. on for the, for the FEU Lady Tamaraus. San Sebastian, unfortunately, they're still winless. You know, but they have improvement today. They won a set, and I don't think they should be disheartened by this. 
And let's turn it over to our courtside reporter, Sam Coloso, who is with our player of the game. Thanks, Lawrence. Kasama ko nga ngayon ang ating best player of the game, Jean Hamili from the FEU Lady Tamaraos. Jean, you know, sinabi nga sa akin ni Coach Tina na most of you guys, in fact, 10, to, 10 of you were not feeling well. Tapos midterms week nyo pa nga. You know, how were you able to power through and say, stay consistent from that second set hanggang ma-close out yung game na to? Ano po, minain set lang po namin na kahit hindi po kami condition lahat, ano, ginawa po pa rin namin yung best namin. Yun po. Barbie, alam ko marami kang fans watching right now. Pwede mo na siyang batiin. Hi po, thank you po sa support and I hope po na supportahan niyo po kami sa next game po ulit namin. Thank you po. Thank you so much and once again, congratulations to you and your team, Barbie. Once again, that was Jean Hamili, our best player of the game from the FEU Lady Tamaraos. Back to you, Jamie and Lawrence. Thank you very much, Sam Coloso, for that interview with uh, our player of the game, Jamie Jean Hamili, as we check out the highlights. Set number one, San Sebastian having success, Jamie. Yes. With their attacks, their reception, their floor defense, everything was there. Everything was in sync. Yes, but it's like a different story altogether. Next switch set, places. Yeah, one set two sets in, especially with the substitution for Hamili. And also Panangin in set number two. Everything just worked well Spark for FEU. Talaga. Spark plug talaga. And that net defense also for the Lady Tamaraos working wonders. That's why they were having success in sets two and three in dominant fashion. And FEU just finished it in set number four, 25 to 16. And the offense of FEU, I would have to say all their spikers were utilized well. And there you have on your screen set four stats with 19 attacks from FEU and only eight from San Sebastian. And there you have two blocks from FEU, one from San Sebastian, two aces from San Sebastian along with zero from FEU and opposing airs, five from FEU and San Sebastian with four. That has been the story for FEU, 19 to eight in attacks. Also give credit to their setters, both setters, yes. Tin Obaldo early in the game having success and then she had to be taken off the game, replaced by Jill Gallo. And it's like they were still humming, they were still have the, the same well-oiled machine. Yes. And that does it for our first game in this quadruple header. And we check out our next game, it will be the San Beda University Lady Red Spikers against the UST Golden Tigresses. We will be back with more action. This is the view.